Okay, well, I felt like that was really fast. I think Mitten's got more uh, air mm -hmm. time than uh, than the chapter. <laughs> All right. Seven, an early palaver. You wake again, this time in bed. The only thing coming through the window is the morning sun, and your strange dreams seem less powerful in its light. They've left an impression, though. Your neck aches and your nightclothes cling to you in a most unpleasant manner. Familiar, though. You are no stranger to bad dreams, though yours don't normally involve you inhabiting, inhabiting other people. Sophia's mother, perhaps? Almost certainly, given those thoughts of Nathaniel, named the same as Sophia's father. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought I remembered, was that he mm -hmm. was the previous lord, or whatever. A strange dream brought on by the circumstances, or something more sinister? More sinister? You wonder as you perform your morning ablution? Ablotions? Whoever writes this uses words that are unnecessarily weird. <laughs> washing down, uh, washing done, you grope for a towel. With the sleep cleared from your eyes, you spot something in the mirror. There's a strange mark on the wall. Groggy as you are from your restless night, can't be sure if it was there when you arrived. Your first thought is that it must be blood and your chest tightens, but no, you're imagining things. This business is corrupting your instincts. It's a scorch mark, almost like a brand. Half a yard across, easily. Up close you can smell it, burnt wood. The chemical tang of old paste and paper. The scent is fresh, though the mark is cold. No matter how you turn your head, you can't make much sense of the shape. Could be letters, maybe, scrawled up by scrawled by an inexpert hand, ha or he. Actually, by uh, actually by your best guess, help. If so, it seems whoever left the message was interrupted before you could be of any use. A careful examination of the mark may reveal something. The vandal must be hiding in the aether. Someone must have crept in unseen somehow. Hmm. I don't know. I guess we'll do a new poll, because I'm not sure what to do. Unos, dos, oops. Unos, dos, tres, cuatro. The only thing I suspect we would learn if we did the first one would be, like, what might have been used to make the marks like if we have a fireplace is there like a poker or something that would have made it burnt or whatever i'm gonna go with this one no oh, everybody else had that too <laughs> <laughs> fair enough i concur while the violet paper has curled away from it, the mark itself doesn't seem burned, only scorched, as though from within. A careful glimpse at its echo in the aether shows you a faint residue of spiritual energy lingering around the letters. The room was guarded against spiritual influence, so it would have taken quite a bit of power to leave any message at all through, the arcane, meth through arcane methods. Perhaps that's why it's unfinished. You can't fathom expending that much effort to s for so sim for something so simple. A note would have been much more effective. A sharp knock at the door interrupts your thoughts. Cursing you, scrambled into a dressing gown and gown that was left here for you. It reeks of mothballs, and you call for your visitor to wait a moment while you shove the furniture back into place. <laughs> um, yeah. If you want to continue. When you open the door, someone is standing just outside, fist upraised. A plump, pretty youth of no more than 20. They have long hair, tightly braided and bound up, and they wear Chris livery, the Chris livery of a footman. Recalling your conversation with Sophia, you realize that this must have been Lauren. 
Their bright blue eyes meet yours for a moment, wide with surprise, quite as though they didn't expect the door to open. The startlement lasts only a moment. Um, I think Lauren was meant to be non-binary. Yeah, oh, okay. A dude that oh, goes by both. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Good morning. I apologize, but is this um, is this our first introduction? Lauren asks with apparent sincerity. You're quite sure that you've never met, nor can you imagine when you might have had the opportunity. Are they teasing you? Uh, I don't. I would probably pick the cho teasing one just because I'm like, that's the way I am, but. <laughs> I like asking why, because it reminds me of James Bond. <laughs> Fair enough. What do you think? I feel like either asking why do they think we've met, or perhaps playing along? I like that one. Cap says why too, so let's go with that. <laughs> oh my goodness. When would we have met? Uh, do you want to continue? Sure. You ask, genuinely curious. Oh, duh. <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. Loren frowns. Well, I've forgotten some of yesterday morning, I think, so it could have been then, but there are a great many times you could have arrived without me recalling. Or you might be a guest, in which case, goodness only knows how long you've been here without me noticing. It's not entirely clear that they're making sense. <laughs> I am a guest. Lady Reeves invited me to stay last night. I'm Mr. Friedman. Loren takes a half step back and looks at you in alarm, though you haven't the faintest idea what you've said to bother them. They look <laughs> you up and down, then frown. No, you're not a guest. I'd know, or at least I think I'd know. Oh, but you mean that you're a visitor here, don't you? Of course, I should have realized. I haven't yet eaten. Uh, I must be a bit foggy. You wait for them to continue, but they just gaze up at you until you clear your throat. They jump. Uh, oh, uh, I'm Loren. I'm here to be your helper? Lauren grimaces in frustration. Your, your assistant, for as long as you remain in the manor. You aren't certain you heard correctly. My assistant? Your aide? Your, the person that guides you to the place you go and ensures that your linens are clean? Lauren rubs one eye aggressively with the heel of their hand. Uh, I apologize. I didn't realize that I lost that one. Have you ever noticed how words get all tangled up with uh, those those other things? They wrinkle their nose in frustration. It looks as though that one has wandered off too, but no matter. Uh, I am no less capable of serving, but we're off to a bad start. Let me begin again. I am Loren. I'll be helping you while you stay here. They slip past you into the room, examining the clothing you've laid out with a critical eye. Something <laughs> about Loren strikes you as unusual. Not their manner of dress, nor their uncommon mode of speech. A feeling at the edge of your awareness, a ripple in the aether caused by something unfamiliar. It worsens when they struggle for those forgotten words. As you recall, your uncle's research involved memory loss. A chill crawls its way up your spine. But Loren seems happily unaware of anything amiss. They nod at your clothes and give a cheerful smile. Let's get you dressed, shall we? I don't need their help. Why would I stop them? That's a servant's job. Creepy. I can ask about the mark on the wall while they dress me. Uh -oh. You don't worry about that, I guess. Pulls up. What choice shall we make? Hmm. 
I don't think they're going to know anything about the mark on the wall. Yeah. They don't seem to be all there right now. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm going to do this one. I don't need no stinking servants. Piss off. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Thank you, but I require no assistance. I've been doing this on my own for years. You do your best to politely crowd, crowd Loren back out to the out to the hall, but they remain unmoved by your efforts. If you insist, but I can't imagine how you plan to tie a straight cravat without help. And all those buttons. Loren adds with a frown. You pour, point Loren to the hall. I'll manage, I assure you. Alone, you do manage. You have been, you have been dressing alone all these years, as you said. Ever since you were a child, you've learned a few tricks along the way for how to pass in society without needing to be dressed by another. Your clientele tends to prefer not to think of you as a, as working class, but keeping a household staff would be a ridiculous extravagance. Loren looks less than impressed with your efforts when you open the door again, though. The two of you spend a few moments straightening you out, though your part is primarily just to stand still and not interfere with as Loren fusses. Eventually, you suffice. There, yeah, now that's passable. Sophia may not stand on formality, but there's no reason to be sloppy. Not that you're sloppy, just a little unkempt, maybe? Rough around the edges. I admit I'm unused to being so... You trail, you trail off thinking to, to think of a polite way to put it so harshly judged by a servant. It will have to do. Loren doesn't appear to take offense, at any rate. <laughs> a servant! That was the word! Oh, thank you. Again, a shiver. Again, a shiver in the aether, but no power you recognize in, in the least. But you must understand, I serve the people here, and it is my responsibility, and I take quite—I take it quite seriously. No one else will, certainly not Godfrey. So I keep my—I I keep everyone in hand, visitors, guests included. Well, especially I suppose. The others usually manage well enough for themselves. Loren pats you on the shoulder, giving you a shy smile. Uh. Is Lorenz still probably here? Yeah. Now, Sophia has asked me to bring you to her, but there's no hurry. She was reading when I left, and she'd be at that for ages if we left her to it. Mistress Oriana's up on the roof, and she would also like to speak with you briefly. She won't be pleased with me if you don't attend to her, but you shouldn't worry about that. Or tell her, or tell her I said that. Oh dear. <laughs> Loren hurries to distract you from the faux pas. We could go find you a bite to eat in the kitchen instead, if you'd rather. Neither of them will think to ensure that you're fed. Hmm, what are we doing? Attending Lady Ryu's directly? Uh, seeing what Oriana wants? Getting a little brecky. <laughs> I feel like for some reason, even though Oriana was the one that was like... I feel like we've oscillated several times with her because like for me she saved my life so I was like okay she can't be all that bad and then at the party she was like mm -hmm. kind of a psycho and then when we got here she was yes kind of a psycho but seemed to be trying to protect us from the secret psycho so I kind of want to I feel like I want to go chat with her and she did get That's us back to what I was thinking too night. attend to last reuse yeah Nice. Yeah, I think, uh... Oh, Lady Reef, is that what you're talking about? <laughs> attending, yes. Cap, attending. Let's go to Oriana. Let's go to the roof. Can't possibly go wrong. <laughs> yeah. If you wish to continue. Loren frowns, but suppresses it quickly as they lead you down the hall. 
Of course, if you're sure you wouldn't rather see Sophia straight away. No, of course not. You would have said so if that's what you wanted to do. Mistress Oriana likes to walk out on the walls this time of day. I'm sure she would welcome your company, though she rarely welcomes mine. Not that I mind, of course. She tells me I should go bother Sophia, and I much prefer that. She is always very kind, and Mistress Oriana is... That word for when you're crueler than you need to be, because it's the only way you remember how to be. Though you shouldn't tell her I said that, you understand? <clears throat> you, you do understand? It takes a moment for you to catch up with the stream of consciousness and realize that the question demands an answer. But Loren barely registers your nod before carrying on. I, I'm so ever glad. They continue. I don't like being... Uh, uh, that thing where you hide your feelings from one another to be polite. Mistress Oriana tells me I'm too much... I'm much too open, but Sophia likes it, and that's the important thing, I think. The two of you stop at a door. Loren opens it, shivering from a gust of cold wind. She'll be out there, I expect. They say... If it's all the same to you, I'll remain indoors. I took a wrong turn last time I was out there and slipped from the Bailey Wall. Mistress Oriana tells me I almost died from the fall, and she doesn't lie, really. It's two lefts and a right if you want to find her, two rights and a left if you want to see where I fell. Though, no, I, I don't imagine you would want that. After two <laughs> lefts and a right, you see Oriana. Her blonde curls are loose in the wind, and the autumn sun gives her a certain glow. She half raises her hand in greeting when she sees you approach. Look out there, she says as you reach her. What do you see? Mm -hmm. The long road back home to London. Rolling hills and open fields painted in all the colors of autumn. Trees, grass, and a rutted track. Mm hmm Hole it is. Anyway. Uh, whatever, I'll do the first one. Oh, you did the third one? Alright, sounds good. Not this intimate. Oh my. Wait, why is it intimate? I think it's because like she's like barely clothed and uh, oh, in the occult, whereas form. and she's gonna touch you. Yeah, she's gonna touch you, you know. Yeesh. Right. My gentlemanly nature is like, whoa, slow your roll. You gently pull back. I would appreciate any assistance you can offer me, of course, but this is rather impropri... Impro... Impropitious? Sure, I don't know. <laughs> Better she think you modest than believe you don't trust her intentions. Oriana raises an eyebrow. I have seen you in less precise, polite circumstances. You do realize. Your cheeks flush with warmth, despite, uh, quite despite yourself. That was a situa situation I'd rather not recall, if you don't mind. Might we not start again? She gives you an appraising look. <laughs> we might, indeed. I apologize. I did not realize that you were of such delicate sensibilities. Oh. I have no interest in discomforting you. Rather, I would hope that you might consider me a friend. Her smile is warm, but there's still a glimmer of cool calculation in her eyes. You will come to me if you are in need of assistance, I hope. I certainly will, you say with a nod. I'm afraid Lady Reeves has requested my presence, so I must leave your gracious company. She waves you away, returning to the view. You head back inside, Loren waits for you, just inside the doorway. We should get you back to Sophia, uh, Loren says, leading you back in. 
You remain quiet, and Loren talks to fill the, fill the silence, but when you reach the stairs, the chatter stops. Or nearly so. Loren quietly counts each, each step and takes them very slowly. I apologize, they say. I forgot how many steps there were once, and Mistress Oriana tells me I almost died from the fall. There are eighteen, uh, in case you want to keep that in mind. Do you, I have a feeling this guy has died a lot. Do you I have... think so too, and maybe that's why his memory is so bad. Yeah, and why he's all yeah jacked up or something. Like... Do you have? Uh, do you often have such accidents? Does one generally need to count steps to avoid falling? Oh, I like that one. I don't imagine I'll need to as much as I appreciate the concern. What are you thinking? I like the second one too. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going with it because it sounds good. Because <laughs> we're going like, up the stairs, right? Or are we going down? I think we're going down. <laughs> Counts each step. It doesn't say. I think taking them very slowly suggests that you're going down. Would be my. Oh, maybe he's perception. blind. Was he trying to tell us earlier he was missing an eye? Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, I, I, I might have missed it completely. He, rub, he rubbed his eye saying something about, like, missing something. I thought he was talking about the words. Oh, I think I think it was missing the words. He's just rubbing it like, oh, man. like oh, Almost okay. like a headache or something. Like, I can't think straight. I think this dude gotcha, has literally gotcha. fallen to his death several times and just got permanent brain damage, even though they, like, keep resurrecting him or something weird like that, mm -hmm. I bet. <laughs> yeah, like you, keep, you keep getting less and less of your whole brain back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something funky. Maybe he's a zombie or something. I don't know. <laughs> if you want to continue. Oh, uh, does one? Loren says. I couldn't say. If I don't count, sometimes I lose track. I, I forget that I'm still on the stairs and take a spill. Mistress Oriana says that I am a blunderous, but I'm not. I just forget. Forget a table and you bang your knee. Forget to fire. You suddenly, suddenly have to. Half the kitchen is burned. Forget to step and you down go and down you go. <laughs> Here we are. When the hall opens into a large room, Loren raises a hand. It's not my place, but you deserve a proper warning. They say in a hushed voice. You seem kind enough. Or maybe it doesn't matter if you're kind or not. An ambush is ne never nice. Or, well, n not an ambush. It's just that Sophia was cross with you this morning, though you're probably not meant to know that. With that, Loren steps back, becoming as unobtrusive as any good servant ought to be. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I suspect that's due to... Maybe wandering Perhaps the halls the night last wandering. night. Yeah, would be my first yeah. guess. Or, the, the or maybe guess she feels be... the spirits like, yeah. Yeah, I would say, or maybe maybe we were supposed to like go and f she thought we were supposed to go and find her last night or something like that. <laughs> oh, oh, she was disappointed when we didn't want to. Uh... You know, retire to yeah. her chambers. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, hop on the good foot and do the bad thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, good times. <clears throat> the sun streams in through a, the glass that surrounds this room, giving it an almost cheerful glow. Outside, a collection of exotic plants presses up against the window. They look wild, like some savage jungle. But... Cultivated paths are visible just beneath the teeming mass. Sophia lounges in the sunlight, reading a book, a plate of bread and fruit abandoned by, beside her. You can't see the title from here, but she appears to be completely engrossed. You notice a slight jerk of her shoulders when you greet her, but she affects complete indifference. Good morning, she says in a decidedly cool tone. I trust Oriana was good company last night. 
Ah, I'm jealous. This is so funny. <laughs> Make the ghost with two ectoplasms. Nice. She needs to clarify why she's upset, because I don't believe I did anything wrong. I don't know what I meant, I meant to have done, but she has no right to accuse me. Nothing untoward happened, but I apologize for retiring without her leave. Interesting. I don't know. Let's, uh, yeah, she didn't notice. come back for us, so what were we supposed to do? Stay there all night? Well, we did take Oriana's word for it. Maybe here's the th here's the thing. I actually think Oriana is like, like yes, probably like, like thief bad in a sense, but not like character bad mm -hmm. in the sense of like evil, right? And I think like she knew or she knows right. that we're like, like she's not gonna like allow us to get eaten by a lion or the beast, perhaps, right? Uh, like without basically doing something to suggest mm, you should like not stay here because if we did stay there maybe we would have gotten quote unquote eaten <laughs> by the beast we succumbed right. to some craziness or something anyway so i i kind of think that maybe she's pissed off because she missed her meal <laughs> like some some psycho succubus or something here Uh, I feel like we go two ways with this. Mm -hmm. I went with number three because it's like we were gentlemanly before, so maybe we can be gentlemanly and be like, I'm sorry, my lady. It's like we're just gonna let fate decide. Roll the dice. Pull the lever, crunk. I we knew this. <laughs> she needs to clarify why she's upset because I don't believe I did anything wrong. She and I scarcely exchanged a dozen words between us. Is that a problem? Uh, yeah. I'll, yeah. Sophia puts her puts down her book and swings her feet down to the floor. The two of you were engrossed in conversation when I left and gone when I returned. What was I supposed to think? That I'd retired for the night, I suppose. As Oriana told me, you had done. You stand awkwardly as you host, as your host continues to fail to invite you to sit. Your heavy clothes feel too warm for this room. Looking around, you note with surprise that there's a fire built up in the grate. Quite the display of, display of wealth, wasting fuel on a glass enclosed room this early in the year. Sophia looks hurt. You believed I'd simply abandoned you for the night? You, a guest in my home? Oriana and I will speak of this later, as I have no doubt that she said just that, but I do think I'm entitled to a little more trust, don't you? I hardly know you, or m might I add, your relationship with your household. She sighs. True enough. Well, you have my apologies then. I win, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a competition who like who picks the shittiest thing. <laughs> or the best thing anyway. Uh of course I forgive her. I'm just gonna go with that one. I'm sure she can mm -hmm. come up with a creative way to earn my forgiveness. Oh my god, that's terrible. Ow, ow. Oof. <laughs> uh, the situation has requires more, much more explanation. No, I, I'm willing to forgive her. I think it's a simple mm -hmm. misunderstanding. There's no need to apologize. You murmur politely. She relaxes slightly. I do appreciate. I do appreciate. Your, oh, is that, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's you. Oh, is that? <laughs> no, it's you. It's you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I do appreciate your forbearance. I know our life here is strange, and you've been drawn into it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading Cass. <laughs> I didn't get my way. No more pills. Pulls. Are you sure? Hmm. Maybe you should take a <laughs> pill. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's an understatement, but that would be impolite to point out. No, no, nothing of the sort, you insist. I'd like to show you something. 
she says abruptly, nodding toward the door. You follow, glad to leave the stifling heat of the atrium behind. This, you can only assume, will be the reason for your summons. Presuming that Sophia isn't so petty as to summon you just to share her peek over the, the that imagined slight, which, given the evidence, might be a bit of a generous assumption. Yeah, 